Hello everyone, today we will be talking about underground and earth sheltered houses with your host, Senec Harris. Thousands of years people have lived in subterranean houses. Examples include caves, pit houses, and cliffside dwellings. Underground earth sheltered homes began to gain popularity in the 1973 in the United States after the energy crisis. They were popular among environmentalists and homesteaders. There was a back to the land movement that was kind of a byproduct of the 1960s, kind of the hippie movement that coupled with high energy crisis or high energy prices, excuse me, after the energy crisis caused some people to start thinking about different ways they could live to save energy. And they decided to start living underneath the ground. Here are some cliffside dwellings that are in the Gila National Forest in New Mexico. Um, it's a pretty cool area where you can go check this out, walk up a trail, make your way through some of these old ruins. Not really sure how old they date. I did visit there in 2015. It was definitely worth the trip, worth the time. If you ever find yourself in southwest New Mexico, you should go check it out. So some advantages to living underground. Require significantly less energy to heat and cool underground houses. Is because the surrounding earth and material maintains a constant temperature of approximately 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I believe you need to get anywhere between 24 and 60 inches below the earth's surface, depending on where you live, in order to get that constant temperature. Uh, it's most efficient in areas with extreme climates. If you use passive solar heating, there's almost no energy used to heat the house. Again, it depends on where you live, what kind of system you have, but... Um, Passive solar is using the sun's heat to heat up a room just by, you know, having either a greenhouse or a little solarium where you can kind of see behind me right here. There is some south facing windows. We get a lot of nice sun exposure through there and it'll heat up our home pretty well. Um, yeah, and with the, you know, base temperature of roughly 50 degrees, if you're buried below grade, you only need to. Heat up about 20 degrees to get to room temperature to get to 70. And uh, in the you know summertime when it's really hot out, it doesn't really get that warm below the ground. So there's very little energy required to cool the house. There's less exterior maintenance. If you only have a small portion of the home or none of it exposed to the outside elements, if it's buried below the ground and it was constructed properly, you shouldn't really need to perform any maintenance, you might only have, you know, a small amount of painting and, and cleaning to do on the outside of the house. They offer greater protection from extreme weather events, whether it be high wind storms, hail storms, snow storms, tornadoes, um, earthquakes, even yeah, being below the ground, you're just you have less of your home exposed. And that in turn, can lower the house of your lower the cost of your house insurance. Research shows as global greenhouse gas levels rise and climate change continues, weather will become more severe. So there might be a time when it's really, you know, the best way to go is to live underneath the ground. They offer an unobtrusive presence to the surrounding landscape. And residents tend to have a greater connection to the earth uh, because you're living, you know, with the earth as opposed to on top of it, I guess could be one way to say it. Um, yeah, you, you, you have, you know, grass, you may have trees growing on top of the house. You don't have this big box just sitting out kind of exposed to the elements. You're kind of buried and tucked away down below the grade, below the ground. And uh, people tend to feel more in tune with their property if you plan it by doing so. It's a nice example of a earth sheltered home. You can see it's got a little area above up here probably get some nice heat up there there's some glass exposed on the front but you have the nice insulative properties of the earth buried on top of it some design considerations uh the topography the hydrologic factors of the building site directional orientation of the house the soil type your building materials ventilation and waterproofing topography the geologic and elevational properties of the building site Building at the base of hills offers advantages and disadvantages. The steeper the slope, the less excavating is needed. More stormwater runoff 
occurs at the base of a hill compared to excavating flat terrain. So in short, you know, if you're trying to build up material on the side of your house by digging into a hillside, um, you just kind of need to dig as far back as you want to go. The sides should already have earth bam burned up on either side and the back side of the house would be already have a layer of, you know, earth to build up against. And then you can take the spoils from what you dug out to cover up the top. Um, if you are digging out in an area that's flat, you need to dig down as deep as you want to go um, in all directions, and that can be a little bit costly. As you can see, here's an example of an area where somebody is trying to build an underground house um, in an area that seems like there's maybe a gentle slope right here, but there is a huge area that they've had to excavate, and presumably they will cover this back up with dirt. I didn't really see a finished picture anywhere online of this house or structure, but uh, it looks like it'd be pretty cool. These domed features are pretty common. They have a, a higher, they can withstand a higher compressive load as opposed to a flat surface. Arches can, you know, withstand a, a bigger load than something flat. Directional orientation. Climate plays a large factor in determining which direction the structure will face. In areas with very cold temperatures, the southern exposure is best. You're going to get the most sun hitting the house at that point. You're going to be able to gain the most heat through passive solar techniques. And in areas with very high temperatures, the northern exposure is best because it will reduce the amount of energy needed to cool the structure with less sun beating on any part of the home that is exposed. Soil types. The best soil for underground or earth sheltered house provides ample drainage and can withstand high compressive loads. Sandy soils with gravel are ideal. Soils that are high in clay are least desirable. Sandy soils have allow for ample drainage and can compress well, so there won't be much shifting. Soils that are high in clay have poor drainage. They expand when they are wet, and once they're wet, the hydrostatic pressure, the amount of water pr or pressure that they are going to be exuding uh, because of the amount of water in it uh, will put heavy loads in the structure and can lead to structural damage. Concrete and mas concrete masonry units reinforced with steel and concrete are the most popular because they're very rot resistant, they're relatively cheap, um, and they withstand high compressive loads. Steel is more expensive and will corrode if exposed to moisture. Wood can be used for light structural applications, but it rots easily, it's prone to insect attack, and is best used for interior work. Tires filled with rammed earth are an option that some people choose to build the walls of a, an underground structure. These are commonly referred to as earth ships, pretty popular in New Mexico. Here is a picture of the earth ship biotexture, I believe it is, earth, tip, earth ship biotexture. Visitor center uh, somewhere in New Mexico. You can see here's just an example of the you know old tire filled with rammed earth. And they kind of stack them up like bricks. Um, they have some earth on top of it in order to create you know some insulative qualities. Ventilation, as with any house, uh, ventilation is very important. Passive cross ventilation may not be as easy if most or all walls in the ceiling is covered with earth. Mechanical ventilation coupled with earth tubes can save huge amounts of energy because you're below the grade. Um, and moisture buildup can be an issue if there isn't, you know, proper waterproofing. Um, yeah, it's pretty important to ventilate. And like I said, you know, you can't really... Might not be as easy to open up some windows and let some moisture out or let some... You really shouldn't use gas appliances as... as little as possible. I was reading if you use any gas comp appliance in an underground house, it should have a totally sealed combustion unit, meaning that all the, you know, all the fumes would be sealed up and not get leak out into the, like the living space of the home, but rather be contained inside some type of ventilation system, but probably is better off going electric. Here is a basic earth tube design. Get back to that, they are ducts that are buried underneath the ground that again take advantage of the constant temperature of the earth. Uh, in this rudimentary diagram, you can see that it's zero degrees outside, but air is being drawn in through the inlet, and by the time it makes it into the underground, which apparently is just a box, um, it 
will gain some heat because it's 50 degrees as it enters that could be going through you know some kind of heater here or there could be some passive solar going on um, and the air then is exhausted back out through another earth tube um, that again will you know hopefully get no cooler than 50 degrees by the time it exits the 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 duct and this website that i was reading explained how if you have the inlet and the outlet next to one another you can save energy by eventually drawing you might be actually drawing in some of the exhaust air back into your inlet and rather than it starting at zero degrees it would start at 50 degrees or whatever the temperature it was when it exited and you know if it came back into here at a full 50 degrees then it would require little energy to to get to room temperature waterproofing is a very important step in building an underground structure everything that will be buried must be waterproof Synthetic rubber, various plastics, liquid polyurethanes can be used. Uh, liquid polyurethanes are best, you know, used in areas where it would be hard to cover with a sheet material. Uh, proper drainage system to prevent excess water from reaching the structure is not as important, but definitely very important. You know, if you are having a bunch of water hit the house, eventually something's going to fail a lot sooner than if you just mitigated that problem to begin with. Um, one example would be to place a vertical layer of permeable gravel alongside the walls that are waterproof, which will allow for water to drain and moisture to evaporate. In conclusion, there's many benefits, including energy efficiency, protection from climate, privacy, less exterior maintenance. There's particular design factors to consider. And if you're going to build an underground house, it should be built by someone with experience um, or a specialty company or consult with a designer. And in true conclusion, this is a picture of the humble coastal, I don't it's the Friends of the Dunes Visitor Center. It has another name, though, um, in Samoa. It's pretty cool. You can go check it out. That was the front. This is the back. Um, yeah, made out of concrete. Is the bathrooms it's pretty neat you guys should go in there and check that out at some point and go for a walk at the beach but uh thanks for watching my presentation i look forward to watching all of yours good luck on the final